Uh, today we're going to be looking at this year's Christmas TV times. Um, I don't know if anyone else has noticed this, but um, over the last, say, five, six, seven years, the Christmas TV times, the cover's been quite generic. It's just like a picture of Santa Claus. And sometimes, even within this very issue of the TV times, they'll show you a picture of the TV times from years past, and there'll be like some quirky, like, family round a table, or it's what was ever the big thing was on TV that year. But, like, say, over the last few years, it's just been, it's Santa Claus, but that's spared nothing. I'm kind of glad the TV times is still going. And one of the main reasons I think I still get the Christmas TV times especially, I mean, I get just one or two times throughout the year, but every year I always think, got to get the Christmas TV times. It's one year really sticks out in my mind really vividly. And I had a quick check on the internet, I think it was like 1988, it must have been around that time period. But I remember these two things, and I'm sure they happened together, if they didn't, I don't, they must be mind playing tricks on me. But the first part of the memory is, I can remember going into my local town centre, and by Death Wish 3 for the Commodore 64, which in and of itself is a great memory. I mean, like it's amazing what you take for granted as a kid. Like now, if I could just go downtown and buy a brand new Charles Bronson video game, that'd be incredible. But I remember buying that, and I remember it being night, night time, about like five o'clock at night, again, quite dark to be in the winter months. Then I remember buying the Christmas TV Times and just flick it through, flicking through it on the way back home. And I noticed Empire Strikes Back was on. And I remember like just being like really, Oh my god, so excited, like you know, sort of hyperventilating almost like it was oh my god. And looking back on it, it was crazy really because it was like, you know, a five-year-old movie, but it felt so new and so exciting that this Star Wars movie was on on Christmas Day and I guess you know like a week or so away from a new Star Wars film, so I guess the more things change, the more the years stay the same. And nothing though it's like, you know, maybe it makes me feel like I grew up in like Flintstones times, but used to have the radio times and the TV times and it was always one of them weird things where it was kind of like uh, you'd have to have the radio times for BBC One and Two listings and the TV times for like ITV and Channel 4 it's like you know you couldn't get the TV listings in like one book it was like wow what kind of you know ass backwards time did I grow up in but one thing I like doing is I like sort of uh, just getting a marker pen ideally a green marker pen because it's my favourite colour and I like just going through uh, through the magazine and just uh, seeing what was on. Uh, so I'll get to like the uh, film section which is page 44 and it starts off, uh, this uh, Christmas TV Times goes from uh, the 19th of December till the 1st of January. I picked a film for each day so I'll just go through it quickly, uh, sort of just like one recommendation for each day. On Saturday the 19th of December on TCM at 6.25 as they were expendable. On Sunday, the 29th of December, got Airplane on Channel 4 at 12.40am. Uh, on Monday, the 21st of December, I picked Flight to the Navigator, BBC 2, 9.35am. It's always one of them films where I feel like I should give it more of a chance really because I feel like I've seen it and I've seen most of it. But I definitely want it as a bit of like a refresher, really. Uh, Tuesday the 22nd of December, something a bit more recent, it's gone for Space Chimps on Channel 4, it's 10.20am. Um, on Wednesday the 23rd of December, and this is a great film, gone for the 1980s classic, Short Circuit. And I still think it's not racist, don't care what anybody says. Uh, gone for on Christmas Eve, 24th of December, uh, Small Soldiers on ITV, it's uh, ITV1, I assume, it's uh, 1.45 pm. Always good to look out for the uh, Dick Miller cameo, as, as always. Uh, on Christmas Day, gone for Frankie and Weenie on BBC2, 1.45 pm, 1.45 pm, and it's a premiere, I've just noticed. Uh, that's one thing as well. I did think it was funny about going through the Christmas TV guide was uh, they have these little boxes, uh, like the uh, one for sex, one for violence, one for language, and I just noticed Scrooged was uh, there and it said, "This updated the Dickens A Christmas Carol as its faults." It's like really, you try to find the faults with Scrooge because you're better man than I if you can find faults with Scrooge, but for violence, none of the uh, boxes are highlighted. This is a film where you see a man thinking he's being set on fire inside a coffin and the ghost of Christmas present kicks the living crap out of Bill Murray. Not bad for a film with zero squares for violence. Oh, it's also um, 
on on Channel 4 at I'm pretty sure the exact same time it was on last year because I can remember watching it at my niece's house and I was getting quite drunk and I was getting quite emotional watching it. But for extra recommendation, we've got um, A Very Money Christmas is on Netflix and it's almost like Scrooge 2. Don't give too much away because it's obviously pretty new, but some beautiful subtle references to Scrooge in there. And it's a pretty cool film, so check that out on Netflix which on any time, obviously, if you've got Netflix. Uh, uh, oh, the uh, uh, Christmas Day listings are on page 116, so I can go through what's on. I've highlighted a few things for, I don't know why I'm scanning through, I don't know the page number. Uh, page 116, uh, on BBC One, I've gone for something pretty obvious, but for some reason, I really like watching it. It's um, 3 o'clock, it's on BBC One and it's on ITV One. I've gone for the Queen's Speech. Like I never would class myself a royalist, but for some reason I really love watching the Christmas Queen speech. But it's always got a slight downside. It's just as the Queen speech is ending, and this almost almost happens every year without fail. But about a minute or a couple of minutes before it ends, it's always when my idiot family comes back in from the pub and they're like, "Oh, the Queen, who does she?" And then people start saying, "Oh, you'll get a job and all this kind of stuff." So it's like Christmas is ruined after that. <laughs> Uh, then on 8.50 on Channel 5, I've gone for Chaz and Dave's Xmas Knees Up, as, as you do. And uh, a couple of little mini highlights, uh, well not mini highlights because they're great films, but uh, on ITV4 at 12.25pm, I've gone for, oh sorry, at 1.50pm, I've gone for Every Which Way But Loose, uh, the Clint Eastwood film, where it shows Clint Eastwood's that good an actor, you really believe he's living with a chimp, or an orangutan, wherever the hell it is. Uh, Police Academy 2, their first assignment, another great film, great Drew, St oh, and the time for that is uh, 10 past 4 on the same channel, and then this is probably the best film at Christmas, this will be perfect actually, 6 20 on five star is war games i'll be hopefully watching that completely hammered uh eating some uh it's well i'm feeling a lot left of us probably but probably full for a christmas dinner so that's uh, the christmas day listings and we can get back to um sort of just for the rest of the year quickly uh for boxing day uh, bbc2 1 a.m in the morning morning uh sunday the 27th of december channel 4 flicker 2 uh, Sunday 27th of December, Escape to Victory, Channel 5, 4.45pm and uh, Tuesday I've gone for 29th of December, Channel 5, 10.45pm gone for Aaron Brockovich because uh, I feel like I should watch it because every time I listen to the um, Lonely Island song Jack Sparrow when uh, Michael Bolton says about being Aaron Brockovich I always think, I haven't seen that film yet so uh, it would be a good excuse to check it out I've gone for Wednesday the 30th of December, The Phantom, which is on at 10.40am, Channel 4. Uh, New Year's Eve, I've gone for The Adventures of 1010, The Secret of the Unicorn, uh, BBC One, 10.55am. Uh, New Year's Day, I have gone for Greystoke, The Legend of Tars and Lord of the Apes, Channel 4, 4.30 till 7 o'clock. Now there's a great New Year's Day film where you're all completely hung over and just feeling like crap. You can just watch that. And that's the last film. Oh, oh Mr. Pearl Riders on. Oh, TCM. Pearl Riders on TCM on New Year's Day as well, at uh, 10.50. Oh, but this is a random Christmas Day memory that I've got. But um, I took this bad boy video over on Christmas Day. Uh, the Exorcist, this is the widescreen version, no less. And I remember loads of people in my family were complaining, like, oh, you can't put the axis on on Christmas Day, and it's always not very Christmassy. Completely forgetting the fact it's a religious film. But one thing that, like, now I've got, like, young niece and nephew, I know I definitely, uh, you know, Dan and Tilly, shout out for Dan and Tilly, I know I definitely couldn't uh, bring horror films out on Christmas Day now because it'd be like, ooh, they're going to have nightmares. But you don't realise when you watch horror film when you're a kid, it's like, you get these cool free nightmares, and they're like, the most realistic, intense horror movies that you could ever have, but, ah, oh, well, they're lost, right? But, uh, Thank you for watching uh, my Christmas TV Times review and uh, now I've got actually Phantoms in the house that can play CDs. I'm going to play this bad boy, Bette Midler's Cool Ewell and uh, Merry Christmas and see you later.